Hey guys, Dan Young here with Dan's Millionaire Code. You guys know every week I bring to you super mega Jedi entrepreneur who have created entrepreneurs who've created phenomenal things that are going to change the planet. And uh, today's guests are incredible because these guys are part of the future of your new experience on social media, on websites, <laughs> all kinds of experiences. And as you guys know, everything is going more digital, and uh, these guys are going to be part of your life. In fact, I believe pretty much everyone here. It's going to experience a piece of these guys' technology here in some form, whether you're shopping or experiencing on the internet. So this is awesome. Um, so the name of their company is uh, Seek. And I've got two guys here, John Cheney and Mike Snow. Um, both of them are uh, co-founders of Seek. It's an augmented reality uh, platform. And John, just to give you a quick summary, he's just a maniac entrepreneur and family dude. Uh, has done some incredible stuff, and uh, and then Mike here, current COO and co-founder, operational expert, international entrepreneur, and again, um, has driven millions of dollars in sales in over uh, 20 countries, so phenomenal. And one thing we all have in common is taking risk and starting an insane company, sometimes working for free for many years, <laughs> um, but, uh, but that's what we do as entrepreneurs. So guys, uh, either one of you can start. Tell us what Seek is, uh, well, before we go into Seek, tell us where you guys came from. Because, like, what's your DNA? Where are you guys from? Yeah, okay. so I grew up in Seattle, Washington. Um, moved out here after a, after a two-year mission in Cambodia. Whoa. The church, yeah. Got to see, you know, third world poverty and, and really joy. It was, it was awesome. People are humble and amazing. Um, came back, did... Did you have, did you have a good duck rate? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> He's a coder, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. So I came, I, I came back and didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. I was pre-med at BYU. Mm. Then I, uh, I had served Vietnamese speaking in Cambodia, just kind of backwards. It was kind of the minority of people there. but um, So learned Vietnamese fluently. And then New Skin was opening up um, Vietnam as their 53rd country. And so there was an opportunity to go and help you know, distribute their products over in Vietnam as one of the first distributors. Wow. So I did that for two years before they opened, which is kind of crazy. So we were there. Lots of good smuggling stories yeah, from we're that. There, really? We were there with, you know, <laughs> hundreds of pounds of product crossing over the Vietnam-Cambodia border. with just And by the time it launched, we'd pushed close to a million dollars of product into the country. Wow. And got the brand established, and then we were able to really... So you weren't scared, though, because you had all that mission experience, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, we're natural. Disease. Like, this is, this is normal, yeah. <laughs> you could talk yeah. this way around yeah. it. Um, and so I, I fell in love with entrepreneurship. Operations, hiring, recruiting, strategy, just the whole thing. Um, started another business in college in the freeze-dry industry, preserving food in grocery stores and farms. Um, kind of beta testing that idea. And then me and John worked um, another deal with English 3 in the tech Eng uh, language learning and tech. Wow. Um, and then John kind of got the wiggles, you know, it's like, <laughs> I need to be in control. I need to create something and own it myself. Um, and so um, he called me up. He's like, hey, you want to start a treasure hunting business? And uh, we started a company called Treasure Canyon. This is 2016. No this is five years ago. Treasure um, hunting. Treasure. So treasure we hunting. literally withdrew 50 bucks each in Susan B. Anthony coins, put it in a glass jar, drove some Facebook ads, got some followers, created clues to go find the treasure up in Provo Canyon. Uh, Dad and his two kids found it, and, and we got more followers. And then the next month we did another treasure hunt. You guys are hunt. maniacs, right? Yeah. So we did a free hunt, treasure hunt every month in 2016, that leading up fun. to a 10K um, prize in September of 2016. Um, and we had 250 people out there looking for this treasure. It was amazing. Dude. 10K race. Yeah. And Wild man. Yeah. And then what led, <laughs> us, what led us into this was Pokemon Go came out that year. Oh, yeah. And John, John was smart. He's like, how could we incorporate augmented reality into a treasure hunt? So we brought on technical co-founders, created you know, AR apps that you could go in and find treasure and you know, tap, tap oh. a treasure chest and win a gift card or TV. Seek and you shall find. Yeah. That's where the name oh. came from. Yeah. Seek. Yeah. Beautiful. It was that, that, that's our journey in a really short summary. So, uh, I'd like to hear kind of like your journey. Interesting. You tell me a little about your family. They're like real estate backgrounds mm -hmm. and development and things. So, how, how did you become an entrepreneur from from your small you know, when you're a little kid? You know, I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, when I uh, when I was about I mean, from as young as I can remember, my dad always said, "Never work for somebody else. You'll never get ahead in life 
working for somebody else. And he said the one caveat to that is you can be in sales because if you're in sales, as long as you're in the right system, then you know you eat as much as you kill, and so there's really no limit to what you can make or do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but at the age of eight, uh, we would go out in Houston. It, it, uh, mistletoe grows on trees and it's way up high, and these trees got to climb up. Um, but they come in bunches that are like this big, and it's just full of, of mistletoe, right? So if you go get a couple bunches. We would take that and then we'd just chop them up into little nice little, you know, house size uh, pieces that could easily be thrown up on someone's door, put them in a, in a little Ziploc bag. Whoa. And then me and my little six-year-old sister, we'd go knocking door to door and sell them for five bucks. So you were and selling the happy herb. Absolutely. Pure legal. That's 100%. right. That was 100% legal. Um, yeah. Um, and, and, and so going around selling mistletoe, <laughs> oh, I was an entrepreneur at age at age eight, I think is probably the You're earliest. Maniac. I can I've remember. never heard. Everyone's always like, "Yeah, I take candy and gum, and I put a little bag. I sell it at the school." Mistletoe. Oh, I did all that stuff too, <laughs> but mistletoe for sure. But no, I was, I would, I would, I would fold up little paper claws and make sets of five for your hands, and I'd sell sets of them at school, and I'd buy candy bars at the grocery store, sell them for more, whatever. So I did all the arbitrage stuff when I was, you know, in in middle school and whatever. So that was fun. But I've just always loved uh, creating business. When I was in um, when I was in high school, I ran a I was a DJ, and so that's creating my really? own stuff. I was uh, yeah, all the big huge speakers could break break windows if I wanted to with those. Um, I uh, taught kayaking, had a kayaking school for three or four years while I was at BYU. Yeah. Gymnastics running right? on the pro year, I was I gymnastics. Did, did you coach, guys all have you guys known each other a long stuff. time? Like yeah, it's, we were roommates it's, in we were college roommates ten years ago. Yeah, so okay. at least yeah, about, yeah. about ten years Get ago. Get in trouble together in college. All the girls would call John Super J. Do <laughs> everything. Yeah. Can you um, DJ too? I, I, yeah, I would DJ. It's fun. We got in trouble a little bit, mostly because of me. I got the cops and the fire fire station called on so me. So John is sitting there with matches, just throwing them, lighting them, and throwing them into the dumpster. And we we're just like, <laughs> what the heck? and then the you know lights on fire. And so we're we're just bucket after bucket. We're going into our little do- dorm room trying to fill up buckets and throw it on and stop putting it out. And then Tons the fire, smoke giving the up. fire department like comes two and we fire just fire trucks. And John's there. just out there by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just left. We me just there. left him. You guys are this is good. Anyway, we'd always we'd always yeah. find good ways to get in trouble and run around and. So seek seek damn. seek. How did you guys make? The, you guys thought about this together? You guys were just chilling out. And... So I initially, um, I was working for again this company called English Three at the mm-hmm. time. Um, I was vice president there, and and you know I was just a little bored. It was just kind of a slow moving business, and you you and, lit their freaking uh, dumpster on fire at. Uh, yeah, you know, exactly. Like a fire for and, and so I just said, you know what, I want to do something a little crazier, and so I quit that, and I went to work at a piano store, a piano selling store, because I I I I played the piano since I was a little baby, since I was three years old, and I compose and write, and so I'm I'm really good at that, and I'm also really good at sales. So I was like, if anyone could sell a piano, it's me. But I talked to the owner before I started. I said, look, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to sell more pianos than anybody else, but I'm also going to be building my own business at the same time. And he's like, cool, sell pianos. I don't care what you do. So as long as people are there. So Mike would literally come down to the piano mm-hmm. store and we'd sit there and we'd work on this idea of both Treasure Canyon that turned into mm-hmm. Seek, mm-hmm. that turned into what we do today, um, which is much bigger than you know Pokemon Go with, with prizes. Mm-hmm. But um, but uh, but anyway, we, we just sat there and made it happen. So... Um, I did outsell everybody on the on the, on the piano. So floor. you got, you guys watch Star Trek? Yeah. So you got you got Captain Kirk and Spock here. Yeah. You know it's kind of funny because you kind of have that Captain Kirky haircut. Yeah. And you kind of have that Spock <laughs> look yeah. too. Yeah. Hey, but that, we'll take it. But you know what's crazy with business partnerships and you know I found two is like the magic number, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and typically you have a little yin and little yang, you know. Mm-hmm. And and it seems like you guys have the just killer synergy. Yeah. Let, let's talk about Seek though and. The types of companies it serves and what the heck is it? So Seek really at its core, you know, in the beginning you said it's an augmented reality company, and there's no question we do augmented reality better than anybody on the planet. But it's but it's it's bigger than it's much much bigger than that. 3D augmented reality is just a derivative of 3D. It's one way to use it, but but the spatial web is is imminent. Um, and and for those that might not know exactly what that means, it means that the web is soon going to be all around us. Instead of just on you know the little phone or the the screen in front of us, you're going to be wearing glasses, and the web will now be everywhere. 
Anything I look at will have information connected to it. And everywhere I walk, it's going to know who I am, what I am. And, and th there's some scary things about that, but we'll ignore that for now. There's a lot of <laughs> legislators th There's a lot of legislators working on that piece of the puzzle, and we'll, we'll work within those bounds. But what we want to do is we want to make it possible on the technical level, and we want to make it easy. Right now, what we do is we help brands that have, uh, you, you know, maybe they're selling uh, this couch. Mm -hmm. right? beautiful couch, and they want to... Uh, they, they want to use augmented reality and 3D to improve their sales and improve their customer experience. Well, they can do that in a lot of places. They can make an app, which is okay, a little cumbersome. They can put it on their website. That's even better, right? They can put it into a Snapchat lens, right? Now that's cool. Now you've got Snapchatters throwing couches down in their living room, seeing what it looks like. You can do the same thing on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. And the, and the platforms go on and on. There's software, there's iOS, there's Android, there's iPads, there's desktop viewers, there's 3D viewers, there's holographic viewers. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways that that 3D asset, that this couch can be turned so that you create a beautiful, nice 3D asset. And then you have to figure out how to make it compatible cross-platform. The easiest mm -hmm. way really to talk about this is we're the YouTube of 3D, right? Um, YouTube, you, you, you upload a video in whatever format you want. YouTube says, great, we're going to convert it and process it and put it in a bunch of different codecs. Then we're going to store it on our servers. And then if a PlayStation 5 or a PlayStation 4 or a Roku or an Apple TV or whatever streaming device, you know, calls that file, YouTube says, we got it. We've already optimized it for that platform. You just sit back and press play. And so that's what we do for 3D. We make it work everywhere. Well, this is incredible, man. It's cool. Crazy, crazy. Now, here, here's a question. Uh, I know you guys are under NDA on some of your clients. They don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it. But are there any that big ones that maybe people have heard of that you guys are doing the engines for, you know, this AR engine? Yeah. So we're in a, we're deep into an AR shopping beta with Snapchat. And so just in the last three months, we've helped onboard Ralph Lauren, Foot Locker, New Balance, um, Reebok. Whoa. Yeah, big, big brand. The whales. Yeah, so we're making LeBron's Nike shoe, and no Kawhi way. Leonard's shoe, Steph Curry's shoes in, in 3D, and then they're creating a lens that goes into Snapchat that you can try on LeBron's shoe. Oh, man. So we'll probably, without getting you guys in trouble, see you on other platforms across that, because once, Snapchat's kind of cool, because that is what their signature thing is, the cool lenses, yeah. and then everyone else will be like, we got to get it. Right, and so I mean, you guys are gonna be swamped with customers. Yeah, yeah I mean, and and I, you know, Snap's a, a newer partnership that's I think got a bright future ahead of us. But we also work with a lot of brands directly, like Nestle's one of our mm -hmm. customers, Wolverine Worldwide, which is like the owner of Sperry and Chaco Sockany. and other things, yeah, Saucony, yeah. other other big brands and and Vans. And I mean, we've worked with tons of mm -hmm. really really big companies, Walmart, mm -hmm. uh, Sam's Club, um, Lego's and, a and really big Lego's a huge, huge client of ours. Wall. But what Which we do cool. for a lot of yeah. these. Yeah, Lego's was fun, right? You yeah. see all the pieces come to life and stuff. But and if you want to try any of this, go to our website. You can see mm -hmm. demos of all of it. But, mm -hmm. um, but what we do for most of these brands is we enable it. We enable this AR directly on their website. That's what companies want the most. Yes, they want to be able to run a Snapchat lens. That's important. It's one channel. It's an it's a big one. It's actually the biggest current AR social channel out there. But the place that matters the most, that gets the most traffic, is the .dot com. Right, so when Nespresso is selling a new coffee machine, boom, you can go to Nespresso.com and you can use our technology to see what that coffee machine will look like in your kitchen without having to download an app, without having to do it. It's all web-based AR. We just make it work in the most in the in the 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 format with the least friction possible. We want that customer to click it. It works. Done. Bye. And that's beautiful because you know there's other types of AR platforms out there, but they're very segmented and really heavy and yours is it, it unifies exactly and it just makes it easy just people want it boom and you yep. don't have to like mm -hmm. download all kinds of weird crap fragmentation and, and veiled walls are are big problems in this industry facebook does it different apple does it different google does it different snap does it different everyone tries to do it their own way because they just say oh we're going to make it for our own platform and that's what happens when you have a nascent technology everyone's trying to figure out how to do it and then you've got fragmentation and 10 ways to do it so now you're someone like lego who says okay we have one Lego set, but we have to make 14 different formats of this for it to, to distribute it in all the platforms. This is this is impossible. So it's right? quick to implement yours. Yeah, for us, we can do it in. in I mean, I think you told me a story. You you like just like just scanned a plethora of SKUs, and I was like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, we could take. I mean, if <laughs> a lot of companies have some sort of 3D file, 
uh, like a CAD file maybe that's used for design and things like that, right? I'm sure you've got them here at PC Laptops and mm -hmm. things like that, right? So you've, you've got a computer, you've got all your designs. We can take that and we can just run it through our system and in seconds later it's ready for distribution on 10 platforms. That's amazing, guys. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. So yeah. in your journey through your treasure hunting company and, and to hear, um, what's been the biggest like butt kicking you guys have each have personally taken most painful and how did you get through that though because there's a lot of pain out there people are going through crazy stuff a lot of business owners are suffering and trying to figure it out let's, let's ask you ask you guys go what ahead Mike. i gotta pick i gotta pick which one for me yeah. well you can you can share <laughs> you can expand off of this one but i would say probably 2018 it was the shift between going from app to appless was really really oh. really big because we no longer needed developers and it was a whole pivot. So, you know, our investors who invested in the original one might not be interested in this new, new model. Of it's a totally new business completely model. Completely new business model. So we, we had to, we lost, what was it, 80% of our, of our employees during that, during that transition, just loss of funding. And we had like everything hinged on this new model working. And I remember John found out about shop.org and told these investors, like, look, we have this one conference. We're going to go to it. We're going to sell this. It was five grand, which we thought was a lot because we didn't have any money. Um, and it's like our last five grand. And me and John went and uh, we landed vans and Holy and um, Kravit, a big furniture company. Um, Ballard and a bunch Designs. Of other ones. Ballard Designs, another big one owned by QVC. And, and it was the very first pitch that we had. We had one model. We had a Nike shoe in AR. We sold all these brands. To get to the numbers yeah. in reality, in April of 2018, we had we had about $250,000 in the bank and about a $250,000 a month payroll. Holy mackerel. So you're right. like... So we had one, one month left. Were expensive. And yeah. you could have just been blur. And, yeah. and then... We had some investors that showed up last minute and said, hey, we're going to fund this. We got, we got you. And, of course, all three of them fell through. Uh. So now we're in May, and we have 14000 in the bank account. Right? We had got a couple receivables, a little bit of money here and there. We had nothing. It was done. Mm -hmm. And so we sat down with the company and said, guys, look, we tried. And we did this with the whole company meeting, right? We had 25 people in there. Mm. And everyone was just like, we get it. Right, we love you guys. You know, it's too bad it didn't work out. We'll go get jobs. We'll figure it out. Um, four people uh, were able. We, we were we were able. I was able to talk to the investors into giving us fifteen thousand dollars each. Four investors, fifteen thousand dollars each. Right. We had about ten. Four of them agreed to give us fifteen grand. They said, "Here's a sixty thousand dollar leash. If you can turn it around with that, good for you. If not, then we're out." But they gave us that. But that allowed us to keep four full time employees. So basically a payroll of 15000 a month. And then four other employees, Mike being one of them, um, decided to work for free. Um, and so year. we managed to, yeah, so for a period of four or five you months. You guys are burning fumes here. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. running, we are absolutely running on fumes at this point. Yes. And this was a very, very stressful point in my life. And and I was maybe more stressed than I needed to be. Um, and other entrepreneurs that have been through and, you know, crashed and burned, probably said, like, look, you come out the other side, it's okay. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to disappoint the investors right some of those investors were you know my dad had put some in not that he was the biggest one but he'd put some in mike's dad had put some in uh, but we had a bunch of other really big respected people in the in you know that had put their trust in me right in us in our company and i didn't want to let that go down and so we figured out a plan our cto thane brimhall absolutely a genius helped us work through this and we came up with this idea of this web-based ar piece and um <laughs> and so Long story short, we uh, we managed to buy by the help of some of the people that worked for free and our little core team. We threw this hail mary by going to this the shop.org mm -hmm. conference that Mike talked about, and we landed a bunch of clients. And then we brought on another quarter million, mm -hmm. and then we landed a bunch more clients. And we brought on another million bucks in funding. And we got and and you know that was that was about a year and a half ago or so, and maybe two years ago now, um, and we're. We're back to full fighting strength. Um, That's and, awesome. And not even that. We're 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 you know heading heading for the stratosphere at this point. So um, we it was a very risky um, and very very stress filled time. I couldn't sleep. I coun't nothing. Like I was just 
I was yeah. done. Are you the kind of warrior in the relationship here? Neither of us are too big of warriors, really. Mm-hmm. We, we but that both, was just such a I, I worry well, existential crisis. I probably, it was an existential crisis, yeah. right? <laughs> I probably you should probably worry at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably riskier than Mike is. Um, Mike is. I'm always like, you're more analytical. Let's spend on this. More analytical, but and Mike and Mike will yeah. be like, but well, we don't have any yeah. money, and I'll be like, yeah. I'll find the money. <laughs> We're some yin and yang there. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, we have a good balance, yeah. for sure. So let, let's summarize some of that experience, though, for the young entrepreneurs and the older entrepreneurs out there that may be going through some crazy stuff. Though, what is advice that you would give? Some wisdom from you guys, like never give up, yeah. never surrender. Mm-hmm. Taking notes. Yeah, um, that's that's what it came down to. I was on the phone day and night. 16 hours a day talking to every investor every company every person I possibly could to figure out how are we going number one I was trying to keep our original vision alive then when we finally decided to make this pivot I had to really validate it and figure it out talk to customers Mm -hmm. prove to myself first that this was going to actually work and once I had that confidence then I was able to get on with real investors and say hey look I've talked to people I've got real interest I think this is a thing that we can get way ahead of no one else is doing this right now and it has to be the future and this was you know two three years ago before you know where we are today where this where the future now is Mm -hmm. is imminent it's happening right Mm -hmm. now Um, but but it it came down to just never I could have easily just mm-hmm. lied what, what, lied did you, over what did you guys died. tell yourself? Well, he, he mentioned something. He said confidence, right? But it's the faith in that in that confidence and faith in a good idea, right? right. We had faith, we knew it was a good idea, right? Whether it was the right timing was kind of a leap of faith. And I think every entrepreneur has that moment where they're like, I could take this leap of faith and do this. I think I know it's a good idea. I don't know if it's exactly the right timing, but at some point you have to take that leap of faith, right? Whether it's a relationship, a business, you know, whatever. You have to take that f- step forward, and we did that with this. And I, w- I would say, advice-wise, um, nail it and scale it. Right? You have to be wise in in, in testing the little testing. It. This was basically a test. Shop.org was a five grand test, maybe six grand with expenses. Test of does the web AR? What does the market think of it? So I would say use the minimum amount of resources to test your idea. But you have to take the leap of faith, and then once. It's validated by the market. Then you have to take a leap of faith to to scale it, which is a whole nother issue. We've been scaling for two years. Where do idea. you guys see this? Your company in just a year or two or three or four or five? How big is this? How big is the market on this for you guys? It's pretty massive. The spatial web um, is something that not a lot of people, uh, just your average Joe on the street, even thinks about or knows about today. Mm-hmm. But when Apple comes out with their glasses, that will change the world forever. Facebook has already announced their glasses. They come out in March or April of next year. Wow. Um, so that's just a few months away. Um, Snap will likely be coming out with new glasses. Google will try Google Glass <laughs> again, except they'll probably try to do it better. they got to do it um, right because you don't want to be a glass hole. That's <laughs> Remember right. that term came yeah, out? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like filming you. You're like, oh. Yeah. It's got to be, be done right. There's a lot of things that have to happen, but the spatial web is 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 a is trillions of dollars i mean it's as big as the web is today 10 years from now the spatial web will be the web right you won't you i mean you you may still have some flat devices but most of it is going to have depth to it which means it has to be 3d every letter will have to be 3 dized somehow so you, you right? guys it's funny that you guys are like very uh wozniak and jobs ish uh <laughs> so when you guys you know take this trillion dollar plus market cap um so what are you guys what are you guys going to do with all the extra resources that you guys have what are some things that you guys want to change in the world go ahead mike i've got a few ideas so yeah i mean i'd love to continue on i mean one of my dreams after serving or living in cambodia and seeing that and just seeing how little they had and how much we have and just like how much we throw out right just every restaurant and grocery store and farm loses you know a good chunk of their food every year I would love to figure out a model and take it to the world, take it around the world where you can preserve that excess food um, and, and, and preserve it and make the, make the whole food supply chain more efficient. That's smart. Um, there's yeah. plenty, huh? There's so much. 40% wow. of farm food doesn't leave the farm. That's, that's phenomenal. That's crazy to me. And I was like, yeah, if you just, and we make enough, there's like, you know, almost a billion people go hungry across the world and we make more, th- more food every year than the world needs. Yeah. So I was like, that doesn't make sense. 
Uh-huh. So, I, I mean, you know... You can cure of, world hunger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or just... Or, alleviate. Or alleviate, yeah. A lot, though. Yeah. there's so much waste. Yeah. How about you, man? What do you got? I got all kinds of things. What's a big one? I could, I big could, one. I could, go, I could go for a while. Um, but one big thing that's local here in Utah that I really want to do, Utah Lake is a an extremely wasted valuable resource it it has i mean it's it's six feet deep in most of the lake um it smells it's got tons of bad sediment it has invasive species it has all kinds of problems and um there's a there's a group of people that that have an interest in this but it's about a it's about a 30 billion dollar project but the the bottom line is if you can what they want to do is completely dredge the lake they'll make it 80 feet deep in some places and and uh, about 50 percent of the water in that lake is lost to evaporation every year right Whoa. so we lose half of that water if we just make it deeper we're going to preserve a lot more it's going to cause less problem with wind um, because when you have really shallow um, water and big waves then it you know, pulls up all the sediment and it makes it just murky and makes it smell bad. Um, but it, but the, the plan is really to take all of that extra earth, they're going to dig it out and make it deeper everywhere, put it in the middle of the lake and actually build an island there with a causeway then going out on each side that connects, you know, the Provo Orem area Whoa, dude, over to, to the Saratoga Springs. And then in the middle there will be an island that will actually be a completely sustainable um, community. And you'll have office buildings and people that live there and all kinds of stuff. And you'll have several other islands around there. And then I want to bring... A big, I'm a big whitewater kayaker and adventure. I love, I love doing things outdoors. But I'm gonna bring, I want to build the world's largest uh, kind of man-made uh, adventure center that's gonna have uh, whitewater kayaking and mountain biking and all kinds of cool stuff. And there's a couple. The U.S. National Whitewater Center in North Carolina is a good model for this, but I want to do it about three times that big. Um, so I want, that's that's something that would be really really exciting to me because I think it would affect millions of people not only here in Utah but people would come from all over the world to do that and we'd be able to turn Utah Lake into a nice pristine like Lake resource Powell again of, uh, right here exactly right? Yeah. and it'd be right, I mean think about what it would do just to the real estate value around will you uh, Utah, text me Utah and uh, we'll come on the show when you're doing that and we can make some of that available to your development to people to do totally to invest in. You bet. <laughs> someone, can, someone can expand Provo Airport to handle the traffic. That's oh, right. Man. No, I think there's. I think there's a huge, a, 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 a many, many, hundreds of billions really nice opportunity here. There and Heck yeah, man! Really Make that a really nice fishing lake. I mean, right now it's just, it's not good for. Skiing. I'm getting a houseboat on your lake. That a houseboat could be a thing Dude, for sure. Sounds like you can have a house but, out there. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, can have, have a house too. on the lake. Dude, yeah, right on. but anyway, that's I think that's cool. an exciting thing that I'd like to get behind. But it requires it needs some big funding behind. Well, you'll have that. Well, you only need thirty billion, right, to get started. So well, we with, need, you know, you get a one trillion yeah. plus cap on this. So. Yeah, I don't know if Seek is quite worth a trillion dollars, but it uh, the the market itself is is big, um, and it's it, it's going to be a pervasive part of everybody. I think life you'll be able to. You guys years. will be able to do this project out of your petty cash. Yeah, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So, uh, where can people find you, like, and see this seek, and, and and where can people find you guys so they can stalk you and see all the cool new releases of your cool new? Yeah, I mean, check us. Um, you know, uh, seekxr.com. S e e k x r.com. It's very easy to do that. And then Mike Snow and John Cheney on LinkedIn. Just find us on LinkedIn. Find me on uh, iTunes. Listen to my piano music. Look up John Cheney there as well. MySpace, like, you know. I think, <laughs> MySpace I, I think my there. MySpace is still on there. I've got a few few million listens. I'm going to summarize quickly too. Your 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 very concise, simple pieces of wisdom is: never give up, never surrender, and have faith, and make sure you nail it, and then scale it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's it. It's so simple, right? So guys, write that down. You don't even have to read the book. Just read the title. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Just read the title. Just read the title of the book. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you guys for sharing all that wisdom. I really appreciate you guys. And you mind if I share one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. This was something that last time you and I were sitting down and talking about, you said you should share that on the show next time. Oh, yeah. And I just want to share it. One thing that, that we haven't brought up enough is the team is responsible for, for this success. No, right? yes. Um, it, was not, it was not me and Mike that did this. Mm-hmm. Um, we happen to be in, in our, our roles are just organizing and, Lots of hustling and lots of stress and phone calls and lots of begging on our knees for people, <laughs> both to investors and probably to mm-hmm. the big man upstairs um, to help. But but when I sit down with my employees, when I, when I first hire them um, in regular interviews, I want them to make sure that they know we care about them as people first. 
and not necessarily as employees to help us reach this trillion dollar vision, right? Um, what we what we really want is um, is for them to understand where their priorities should be, right? Um, and I always tell them that that seek should be maybe their fourth or fifth priority in their life, and and here's why: number one should be themselves because if they can't take care of themselves, they can't take care of their family. Um, they can't help seek for sure. I mean, they're 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 not going to be of much use, right? So make sure mentally, physically, they're good to go. Two definitely their family their 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 actual family is going to be more important than their seek family we are family at seek but but that's going to matter more then three is going to be religion beliefs core values systems that that drive you and keep you going and then four maybe even before seek is going to be hobbies things that you love things that make you tick for mike it's skiing for me it's kayaking or piano or whatever right there are things that i like and then comes the company then comes the job and here's why right a lot of a lot of companies I've, I've heard plenty of stories luckily I don't I've never really worked for a company that um, that really you know hounded the Cindy but a lot of people say no the company comes first before everything right if we need you here at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night on Christmas Eve whatever you're here and I understand that sometimes there's emergencies and you need to make sacrifices and that's great but the general rule is the reason that that order is like that is because what happens if you don't have yourself? You, no, nothing else matters, right? If you don't have your family, can you live without that? No, not a chance. Can you live without your religion? If it really matters to you? No, you cannot. Four, can you live without the things that really make you enjoy life? No. Can you live without your job? There's plenty of jobs, right? You can do that. And so I think that helping our employees understand that we care about them and and that seek should be driving those other things in their life and improving their life as a whole we give them fridays off so that they have time to do these things and maybe start their own business because we like that we, we encourage entrepreneurship but the point is if you do that then the employees will go to bat for you whenever they need to they'll work hard they will be incredibly loyal and even work for free for four months for five months if we run into a crunch or something like that um, not that I recommend that course of action <laughs> but that I just I want to end with that I think that I think that making sure that uh, that the employees and the people are taken care of uh, in a way that um, uh, they they really know that they matter mm -hmm. more than the company matters and if that balance is helped right everybody will grow together that's, that's pure fire and wisdom mm -hmm. and you know Thinking about that, for all the companies you know that I've done myself, it's, it's the same thing. It's the people that really create it. Companies are people, mm -hmm. right? Totally. So if you prioritize them, they'll prioritize your whatever you're building, right? Yeah. So guys, don't forget that, man. That's true wisdom. Thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate both you guys yeah. coming on. Thank you. We're, I'm really excited to see what the future brings. And now everyone's going to be looking at like different brands going, hey, <laughs> yeah. that's what powers that. So yeah. this is very exciting. And then so SeekXR, that's that, dot com. That's the best place to see what you guys are up to. And are you guys are you guys on like LinkedIn, social media, that kind yeah, of stuff, dude? LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Okay, go go follow these guys. Yeah. I appreciate you again. Yeah. Guys, thank you for watching Dan's Money Recode podcast. And you know, there's no charge, there's no commercials, there's nothing you have to buy, download, or anything. It's all right here for you. I ask that you do just two things, uh, if possible. Uh, one Share this with your friends and loved ones who um, may benefit from this. Um, critical to share it, and if you found value in it, you know, rate it good and stuff like that, and share it out there. Um, but two, this is actually the most important piece about it is execute. If if these guys have given you some of their wisdom and it's, it's stuck and you wrote it down, make sure you're actually doing it. And I think you guys will find with every podcast, there's just usually a few, a few basic things that were the key to these guys' success. But what's kind of crazy, if you've listened to multiple episodes, if you just take every day a few of those things, somebody listen to one podcast a day, one a week, and implement that during your week, soon you'll have that recipe to scale yourself to just unbelievable levels. Anyway, guys, I will see you guys next week on Dan's Miracle Podcast. Have a great one.